right, so welcome everybody um, to this webinar being put on by the Maryland School for the Blind, Schoolology for TV Eyes. Um, this webinar is being recorded and you will all have access to it. It will be sent to your emails that you use to register as well as on the Maryland School for the Blind YouTube page. Um, I'm Conchita Hernandez. I'm in charge of services for blind and low vision students in Maryland. Um, and I wear many hats. <laughs> so um, if you all are on the Facebook page for Teachers of the Blind and Visually Impaired, um, there's a lot of really great information. I would recommend that you subscribe to that if you have not already. Um, I want to take a quick poll um, to check what, what is your current role. Um, and I'm hoping lots of TVIs um, and the options are TVI, paraprofessional administrator or other. And then in what ways do your students access vir virtual content? So is it braille displays, JAWS, Zoom text, um, large print, all of those good options, magnification, have not found adequate ways, and you can have multiple of these for different students. Um, oh, you all are such great response rate. Okay, so for the first one, we have so far 93% uh, TVIs. We do have some paraprofessionals. We do have an administrator and a couple others. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, for those of y'all on how your students are accessing, 43%, 42% are accessing with a braille display, 43% um, with JAWS, 38% with Zoom text, 62% magnification, large print is 45%, and have not found a method is 35%. Um, awesome. Oh, I can share those results with you all. Okay, this is my first time doing a poll. <laughs> Awesome. So um, I'm really excited uh, for our webinar today. Um, a lot of y'all had been requesting it, so we kind of made it happen. I'm going to go over the schedule real quick. Um, so we're I'm going to do introductions with our poll. We're going to hear from Chrissy Vinoy um, about navigating the system as a TBI, how you can do things within Schoolology. Um, and then we're going to be talking about um, I created a resource document for you all through Google Drive that you can access. We're talking about that, heading styles, using JAWS, and then um, Vicki's also going to help us with connecting Braille displays. And then we're going to have Q&A at the end. Um, you can type any of your questions in the chat box and we will do those at the end. Or if they're relevant during the topic, we can, we can pause and do that. So I am going to stop my screen share and hand it over to Chrissy. Hello everyone. Let's see. Um, my name is Chrissy Vinoy and I'm a teacher of the visually impaired in Kanawha County Schools. And um, uh, during this little time, um, I decided to, well, not decided, but was forced to um, learn um, Schoology and dealing with my kiddos. So um, I wanted to share with you what made the best method to my madness and stop me at any time um, if I'm doing anything because where I'm sharing the screen I can't see any questions or comments so stop me at any time if you have any questions. Um, so and it's a webinar so I'll, I'll go ahead and stop you. <laughs> okay so um, what has made sense to me is um, I've created courses for each of my individual students. And so uh, when you log into Schoology, you have courses, you have groups, you have resources, all of that stuff. So um, I've created courses and you can see some of the courses that I have created um, for the spring semester. And I'm gonna go ahead and create one and just do a generic version with you all. So that way you can see how to add people. And then I'm gonna show you how to um, do a folder as well as make an assignment. And any time if you need me to stop or slow down because I talk fast, I will do so. Um, so when you go to courses um, in Schoology, you're going to go to my courses. And then it is very simple. You can either join a course or you can create a course. And for me, I create a course. And then you can title it however you want. Um, I have a student that I did Braille with. So you can see earlier it said 
morale and then the student's initials. Um, however you want to do it to make sense to you. So I'm just going to type in TVI practice. I can spell. And then um, you have to have other. And this is just fluff that has to be added in there in order for it to create the course. Grading period, I always scroll down and put all the way down at the very bottom forever. We don't do grading with uh, visually impaired, the teacher with visually impaired, but you have to have that in there in order for it to create it. So then I'm gonna create my course. So here's my course. Now, you have your generic picture here. If you wanna go in and create a different picture, you can do that. If not, up to you. If you want to add members, you go down on the left hand side, you have a whole bunch of new icons and members are gonna be down here on the left. So you click on members and then I am the admin and you can tell that I'm the admin because I have this little star on here, which means that I can take people in my group, I can take people out of my group, I can um, put things in the group as far as assignments and folders and basically, I'm in charge of this group, in charge of this course. I'm sorry, I'm in charge of this course. So I'm going to add, and I've already talked to my other TBIs, so I'm gonna add one of my TBIs. This would be your students. So I'm under Kanawha County Schools because these are, this is my area. So I'm gonna type in, and I'm gonna search. So, and once you click on it, you'll see that there is the red check mark, which lets you know, yes, that's who I want. And I'm going to add my member. And he has automatically added to my group. One person was successfully enrolled into your course. Now, once he is enrolled into my course, I can continue adding people if I want to continue adding people. If you have um, a Braille person that you're doing specific assignments with, then you're going to focus on that same course. You'll have one member for each course. If you have other people that you're doing different things with that are the same, like same eye condition, but you're doing like tracking, for example, then you can have examples of that in the same course, um, but then you can assign them different things. So let me just show you, I'll, I'll leave Joe up here. He's my member and this is my course. So now, is there any questions with that before I move on? No. There is, let me read it to you real quick. Um, this one says, this is from Sherry. It says, I would be the only vision teacher using this platform. Is there a membership fee? None of my schools use this. Oh, um, yeah, you'll have to talk to your, um, your director of special education then and uh, get with them because there is a membership fee. I don't know specifically what it would be or how much it costs because my county did purchase it um, through the county. So um, you'll have to get with your special ed director and figure out um, how much it would cost to do. Sorry. Um, so there's another question in the chat. It says, what about confidentiality? Can everyone see student initials on course names? So that's the thing with the courses. If you choose to do um, the course, like when you see, for example, when I'm in courses, let me just go out. Okay, so you can see these courses. This is just my courses. So when I'm logged in, this is all that you see. This is my personal view. So if somebody else is logged in, they're not gonna see this, but that's why I have Braille DM, I have uh, KV Vision uh, GY because I'm not giving their specific name. And nobody else can go into that course unless I give them access to that course. So unless they have access to that course, they can't get in it. Does that make sense? 
Perfect. Um, we don't have any questions at the moment. Okay. So once you've created your course and you have gone, here's my TBI and you're in the course and I have my members. These are the only two members. So right now it's just me and Joe and I'm using Joe because he's allowing me to use him and he's an adult. So it's okay that he can, I can use him. <laughs> he's already said I could. So now I'm going to go to my materials and go back up to the top. This is where you are going to create your assignments and or folders. And so if you want to click on add materials and I like to get organized and I think of my folders just as that as folders and I'm going to get organized and put everything into my folder. And then once I have my folders, then I'm going to put my assignments into those folders. So for me, I have to know what I want my folders to look like. So before I show you that, I want to show you what one of my courses look like. This is my Braille kiddo. And um, you can see that for him, I had Space Camp information, Bell Academy information, m and m Braille writing, keyboarding, Camp Fusion, like all of this information. And then once I had my folders, if I click on one specific, orientation and mobility, then when I get into that folder, then there's the assignment inside that folder. There's a comment in the chat. It says, you can also go into the courses if it has more than one member and block the roster. Check no one and only admin can see. For example, my Braille students, teachers are included at as admin so they can see what I have assigned. Yes, yes, very good. So let me show you how to create a folder. So you're going to add material and you're going to add folder. And then here is when you can type in what you want. Welcome back. And then you can make it whatever color you want. And then if you want a description, you can have a description if you want, if you don't, up to you and then create. And then there's your folder. Now, because there's only one member in this course, it is okay to like leave open. But if there's multiple members in this course, when you see this little um, settings icon over here on the side, you can individually assign. So when I was talking earlier about if you're doing like tracking and you have Andrew and Kathy and they're doing the same thing, but then you can assign Kathy a folder and you can sign Andrew a folder and when they sign into the course they're only going to see Kathy's folder or Andrew's folder they're not going to see both of them and so you would click on individually assign and then you would add the person obviously he's the only one in the group so that's the one who gets it but if you had multiple people in your course then that's when you would individually assign So um, that's how you would individually assign. So if you want to um, add an assignment, then you go to add material and then you add assignment. For my kiddos that um, need the audio or the auditory learners, then I will click on the microphone down here at the bottom and then that's going to be the audio slash video recording. So I'm going to type in assignment one. And we're going to say farm animals. Please um, match farm animals. So then I'm going to hit my microphone and I can do audio only or I can do audio and video and um, I like to do audio and video and so I'll click on audio and video and I'm going to allow to use the camera and I'm going to start recording. Farm animals. I want you to match the farm animals. Insert recording. And then so 
then they can then click on this video instead of reading the directions they can click on the video and listen and or watch me read the directions to them there's so, a comment real quick um, in the chat and it says this looks similar to Seesaw. Are you familiar with that? I have heard of Seesaw, but I'm not, um, I know of Seesaw as far as like know the name of it, but I have not used it, no. If you wanna add a due date, a due date you can. I normally don't. Um, I always pick forever for the grading period and then if you want to more options you can individually assign or whatever you prefer to do and then create and then also um you have to put the animals in here sorry so if you want to share a link we can share a link or we can put the file so i'm going to put the file and I have it saved to my desktop because I wanted to make it easy for you all. And I had farm animals, listening strips with farm animals open. And so now it is going to attach the farm animals PDF to the assignment. There's another question in the chat box. It says the assigned from app where it says Google Drive assignments, would it be district dependent on what apps are allowed? I want to say yes to that. Uh, I'm going to say yes to that. This is Cheetah. Yeah, it is um, because in some districts, for example, you can't use Google. Um, and so it's set up based on the settings that your district has set up. Um, many times if you're a TVI and you need a certain one that isn't available because of restrictions put on, you can try to petition your county or however it is it works where you're at um, to try to get access to that specifically for accessibility um, and stuff like that. So do keep that in mind. Yes. And then once you have everything on there, you have the recording, you have your directions, you have your assignment, then um, you will, category is going to be ungraded. And for everything as far as TV as go, everything's gonna be ungraded. And then you're going to create assignment. And then so right here's your assignment one. If I click on it, then I can listen to my video it'll pop it up a recording farm animals i want you to match the farm animals okay so that Start recording ah, stop farm and sorry and then after you do that then you can click on your assignment. And then here's your assignment. So honestly, uh, for my kids, I did uh, a lot of auditory and a lot of conferences in Schoology. Um, so that is mainly the the stuff that i did with them so once you've created a course then you can create folders and once you get a gist of what you want your folders to look like then you can put your assignments in there and then once you have your assignments then you go from there it depends on the student's ability as far as their vision what they can and can't see and then what you can do and what you can't do with them as far as accessibility um Conchita and I were talking about our Braille kiddos. I had a Braille guy that I ended up doing a lot of audio with um, just because um, I ended up embossing a Braille book for him. I had my Braille version. He had his Braille version. And then we used conferences, um, which is a great way to um, another platform that you use. And you can see these are all the conferences that I completed with him. Um, throughout the spring semester uh, and basically it was just a way for me to see him and him to see me 
And then that way, um, when he was reading his Braille book and I was with my Braille book, if he missed a contraction, then I can be like, oh no, let's look back. Um, and then, you know, see how everything went. I also suggest that when you play around with this, you can do YouTube videos for your CVI kids. Um, I know I'm jumping all over the place and I apologize. Um, again, if you need me to slow down or stop, just tell me. But um, for my CVI kiddos, uh, I ended up getting YouTube videos and you can also go in and import YouTube videos into your assignments and or resources for your students. So here's my resources that I just ended up plugging into. And so I have CVI apps that I shared with my There's students. a question real quick, sorry to interrupt you. The question about the student you mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. uh, it says, did you use screen, re did he use screen reader to access the conferences? No. So um, the acuity he had is like 2,650 is his distance acuity. Um, and he did not use screen reader, but he had his Acrobat and then he had um, his, uh, he's got an iPad Pro, which is a 12.9 inch screen. And then he was using it underneath his Acrobat. So he was able to um, figure out where it was on the screen. And we're also going to, after um, Christy's section, we're going to go through the student um, interface and, 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 and talk about screen readers and Braille displays. And so the last part um, I just wanted to talk about is YouTube videos and then being able to insert them into Schoology. Um, so then that way you can add for like your CVI kiddos um, who are reading, um, you know, print and or needing that backlit um, presentation. So um, I have um, interactive books that is like hyperlinked that I've already downloaded and I will walk through how to do one of these with you all. Oh, um, perfect. Real quick, that was one of the questions. It says, how do you add links to the resources? Okay. So I will show you how to do this. So back in our practice play. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to add another assignment. And this is gonna be new and I'm gonna put CVI. Um, and we're gonna go, um, if you give a mouse a cookie. Okay. Video of Okay, so right here is your hyperlink button. So what we're gonna do first is I'm gonna go to YouTube. And I suggest like once you start playing around with this and figuring out what you wanna do, that you start putting stuff in your resources, which I'll show you how to do that because if you end up like having to um, take stuff out of your courses or for some reason deleting your courses or the district decides to, okay, well, we're moving on to another school year and your course is now gone, um, which they can do. So I would highly recommend anything that you've created or done that you then in turn um, save to your resources because they can delete stuff from your courses, but they can't delete stuff from your resources. So that's fine. I have two questions real quick. <laughs> One says, I will be sharing a student with another TVI, so it looks like one of us could create the course and then the second could be added as an admin, so the student only has to go to one place to access both of our assignments. Do I have that correct? Absolutely correct. And then um, you as the TVI can be the admin, and then once you add um, your other TVI, which I'll show you that next, um, you can then like, I'll create, I'll sh I'll add Joe as my admin, and then you can make the other TVI your admin, and then you both will have access to it. So then that way you can plug, uh, resources and information and stuff and, and work at it on it at the same time. 
Perfect. The next one is to make sure I am clear, the student that logs into your course doesn't see all 10 of your teacher course folders, only the course folders to which they are invited, correct? Correct. And, okay. and if two or more students are in that course you've created, where one student doesn't see the other two, five, or 10 kids that have access to the same course um, in the view only box. Okay, so it's correct as earlier stated in the courses, like when I showed you all of my courses, you could see all of my courses. I was the only one that could see that. So if, if I'm inviting someone into that course, you're the only one that can see into the course. Now, if you have like five students that are going into the same course, then whatever information you pin into that course, all five students can see unless you individually assign those assignments. And then once you individually assign those assignments, then Susie can only see Susie's assignments and Paul can only see Paul's assignments. But if you have resources that you wanna share with every you know, kid on this course, then you can just share all and everyone can see all of that. Someone also just asked, is there a community of TVIs where we can share activities with other teachers if they choose to? So I'm gonna share the, the link to the Facebook page. It's called Teachers of the Blind and Visually Impaired slash O&M Specialists. Um, and I'm putting it into the QA that you asked, and then I'll also put it into the chat box. Okay. And so what I did while we were all talking is if you didn't um, see is that um, I just copied the um, link from YouTube does anyone need me to go over that again to get the link? Doesn't look like it seems like okay. it's good. So then I'm gonna hit the link button down here and then I'm just gonna, on MacBooks, I don't know if you guys are familiar with MacBooks or not, but you know, um, they say with computers you have control, with MacBooks you have command. So you command C is copy and command V is paste. So I'm gonna add my link. And on the course, it's not valid. So I'm going to do it again. And I have four minutes and I'm, I'm conscious of time. <laughs> and it's okay. If you need to go a little bit over, it's, it's totally okay. If I can talk. I can't type and talk. I'm going to read you the next question real quick. <laughs> Um, when uploading the worksheets for students, how would they then complete the worksheets? Okay, so once you have uploaded the worksheets on there, then the student will have like a PDF version of the worksheet. And then um, once they have the PDF version, then they will open it on their iPad or their device or however they can open it. And then they should be able with a PDF, then you can put a fillable box in there and type in the answers or, um, you know, fillable, and then write into it and then send it back. And you can also do Word documents. It doesn't have to be a PDF. Right. Okay, so um, if you give a mouse a cookie mouse and a cookie. I have the share and if then you copy. Give a mouse a cookie. He's going to ask for a glass of milk. And then I'm going to paste. And I promise it worked like 20 minutes ago when I did this on my own. <laughs> okay, well, we'll do a different one. Colors. Sorry, guys. Okay, so people in the, in the box are commenting that you're just putting it in the wrong place. That's why it says the link is being entered into the wrong box. That's all that happened. You're putting it into the top box. Um, and the oh, title is the second box. Yeah, there you go. 
That's what I did. Good catch, everyone. I thought they were talking about myling, so I'm like, wait, what did I do wrong? Okay. <laughs> everyone working together to help solve it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I just figured out my own dumb move. There we go. There we go. First box, not second box. And it's, it's going to be collars now, but you get the dip, drift. Okay, attach. There we go. 30 minutes later. Sorry, guys. So then you have, and then you have the hyperlink, and then it's going to be. You always have to do ungraded, and then you create. So if you give a mouse a cookie, and then it's going to be colors, obviously, because I couldn't put it in the first box. Colors, and there it is. So there you go. So if you want to, um, any questions about that, <laughs> other than putting it in the first box, not the second. <laughs> Sorry, guys. There are no questions right now. Oh, wait, as soon as I said that. Oh, so Andrea says you're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> I promise this worked like, I already did a run through, but then you know stuff happens. Okay, so let me show you resources and let me see if I can remember how to do this. So I'm in my courses. So once you've done an assignment, once you like, let's just say the collars, you really like the collars and you want to do something with this. Let me see. It's just going to take you there. How did I do this? Okay, click on it and then I'm going to save to my resources. So you like this resource a lot or you're going to be doing a lot like with my kids that have CVI. I found a lot of interactive videos that I use with them just because to get their attention in that direction or if they use if their preference was the right side, I made the parents use the left field. So any, anyway, so you're going to go to the um, settings tool bar here and you're going to save to resources. So you're going to do your collection and I'm going to do TVIs. We do have questions now. There's one that says, is the course being private the default or do you have to mark each as private or public? It should um, be defaulted as private. And then somebody asked, how did you copy the link? Okay. So I will show you again. All right. So um, if you are on YouTube, And if you haven't already uh, found this girl for you, uh, CVI videos, she is phenomenal. Alyssa, uh, I don't know how to even say her last name. I don't even want to say it wrong. She is phenomenal. And I have actually um, created a um, five green. Um, all of her CVI videos I've actually copied and then given as a resource to my parents when all this pandemic stuff first started um, just as like tidbits of things that you can do with your kids at home if they would even react to it um highly highly recommend her so okay really quickly we just had a, a comment um this person says i'm a blind tbi if you could please um describe things as you're as you're having them come up as well absolutely i'm so sorry um Okay, so I clicked on the YouTube site and her name is Alyssa and it's just spelled D-E-S-O-U-S-A. And so on the screen, it's a black screen with the uh, five speckled frogs with the um, highlighted red outlining um, letters for CVI students. And then on the right side of the screen shows various other YouTube videos that she has created as far as ABCs, Twinkle Twinkle, um, various other 
uh, songs and activities that she has created for CVS students. So um, down at the bottom of the screen, there is a share arrow button that um, once you press that, it will have the link or the hyper link that you can create. So it states the link www.https slash YouTube all of that so I'm going to highlight it and I'm going to command C because I have command of my MacBook and then I'm going to switch back over to my Schoology page and then I'm going to go into my add materials button at the top of the screen and I'm going to add an assignment And then I'm going to type in CVI video. And then down at after you type in your description, five speckled frogs. Then you have the options. Uh, file and then you have your link and it looks like a chain link and so I'm going to click on the chain link and there's two boxes and my mistake earlier I was putting it in the second box you need to put it in the first box and then so I'm going to command V and I'm going to put the link that I just copied into that box and then I'm going to title it five speckled frogs And then um, there's the attach button. So once I've attached it, I've attached the video to the assignment. And at this point, if your students again are uh, having issues with reading the uh, instructions and you want a video and or audio, I'll go over that one more time. Um, you have your file button is if you're doing um, importing anything from a file, that's a Word document, a PDF, something you found on Teacher Pay Teachers. Then you have your link button, you have uh, resources, is if you already have something in your resource folder that you wanna pull in, then you have your microphone. And so I'm gonna click on my microphone, and this time I'm just gonna do audio because y'all don't need to see my ugly face. And I'm gonna have the start recording. Please watch the video and see how many frogs you can count. I just want to give a comment. That's especially a good tool for your students who may not be um, Braille readers yet, or maybe early readers, or maybe transitioning from print to Braille, um, for whatever reason that it might be difficult for them to read the text. It's like a really great tool for our kids. Or especially if they have already been working all day on a computer and they have really bad eye fatigue and you're, you know, they read really well in the morning and it's now afternoon. <laughs> um, so again, you just hit audio only, start recording. Please follow directions and count the frogs on the video. Stop recording. Insert record, insert recording. So now you can see there's two uh, boxes down below. I have my uh, link for my YouTube video and then I have my audio recording to give me the directions. If you wanna type a lot, you can. If not, whatever you choose to do. And then just make sure you remember that you have to put ungraded because if you don't, they're gonna, I'm just not gonna put it and you can see there's an ugly message that'll pop up. Um, so I, I think I'm done. There's a real quick cool qu question that says, can you explain a little bit more detail about the PDF worksheets? Okay. Okay, so it says category failed is, re uh, the category field is required. So it's not gonna let you do anything until you have it ungraded. So that's a nice feature. So once that is done, you create. So now that is created. So now that that is done, you can click on your assignment and here's your link to the video, and here's your audio recording. So we are right on that. Okay. 
so when you upload assignments, like they had said earlier, you can upload an assignment and if it's a PDF version, then all they're going to see when they open it is that PDF version. So let me show you. I'm going to go back to my materials page. And I'm going back to assignment one with my farm animals because that is a PDF. So if I'm the student, when I open it up, this is all I have. Like I can't write in it. I can't do anything else. I can just look at it. So as a student, you know, how are you going to write in it or say, okay, well, I found the cow, but how do I circle one or how do I relate back to that? <laughs> so um, you can insert a text box and And I'll have to play around and see. Download. So you're going to download it. And I'm going to download it to my save. And then once it's saved, I'm going to open it. And then from here, you should be able to. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'll have to get back to you on that one then because I thought you could just insert a text box, but I'm wrong. I will find out. Um, thank you so much. And could you do me a favor and keep your screen open to the Schoolology real quick? Because yep. So we got a question that fits perfectly for this transition. So the, the question is, how accessible is Schoolology with VoiceOver? We have found that you can navigate it, but postings are typically limited in accessibility. So yes, absolutely. In the sense of Schoolology is accessible as long as the documents you put in are accessible. So if you have a general ed teacher who is inserting documents that are not accessible, then yes, it won't be accessible. Um, the main sections where it says right now assignment one farm animals please attach all of that is really really easy to get to this for the students on the left side um it's very similar to what it looks like for a student where it says materials updates grade book and it has other options for students that's a little more tricky um okay you can stop screen sharing all right so i will say something about schoolology is that it is very secure because I have tried and uh, Chrissy knows this, Vicky knows this, to log in multiple times, multiple ways, and it has not allowed me to. Um, so of course there's always like when there's a will, there's a way. And I have created a resource for you all that I'm going to put in the chat box, um, Schoolology Resources for TVIs. So I have links here on tips for using the breakout rooms, um, how parents can access it. I added the link that um, Chrissy was mentioning, Alyssa DeSosa CVI videos, and then I added a link to the TVI Facebook group. Um, JAWS hotkeys, um, for those of you who are maybe newer to the field, it's a great link that has all the JAWS commands um, that are needed. Um, and then these three videos were created um, by Dr. Robinson, um, showing how to use Schoolology, what the different areas are, using it with JAWS, um, and kind of knowing your headings, your links, um, and stuff. I'm going to really quickly put this into the chat so that you all can have it. Yeah, someone says you need to open the document in Adobe in order to manipulate it. Yeah, that's very true. 
Okay, so you now have the, the link to the Google Doc so you can um, follow along um, or anything else. Okay, let me close the Q&A real quick. So Schoolology, like I said, it is accessible as long as you're doing accessible things. I'm gonna give you a very brief overview. This is an example of a document, welcome to fourth grade, asking some questions. Um, it, headings, headings, headings are how you make a document accessible. So this is the title and for JAWS and a braille note to read it correctly, up here it's normal text right now. You wanna make it, uh, you wanna make it a title. So you would right click and go to update title to match selection. So it doesn't change the formatting and now it's gonna read it as a title. And then you can make your questions heading one. That way they can just navigate from question to question. So that's what I would do if it was a question. So now it, it'll jump to this question and I would get rid of these lines. Um, and now the document up to, he, up to this point um, is accessible. So I just wanted to review that real quickly for those of you who, who may be new. Um, that is the easiest way that your students will be able to access a document um, with JAWS, with uh, a Braille note, um, any type of braille note to make to make it accessible and um, getting your general ed teachers to do the same because it doesn't matter if schoolology is accessible if your students can't access documents okay so now i'm going to show you all a really quick video because i really loved this one um, and it explains the navigation of schoolology and grammarly can Let's make this big. All right. Help you write quickly and confidently you so you never have to slow down at work. In school year 2020. Hi everyone, Dr. Robinson here. With okay, can everyone hear the audio? I just want to double check. Vicky, can you hear the audio? Maybe in the chat. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Thank you all. All right. So I'm going to. This is a perfect um, how to navigate it with JAWS, and you have this linked in the document I shared in the chat box. Another tech lesson on how you navigate Schoology. So it's pretty straightforward in general. You insert F5, insert F6, insert F7. Remember those commands always because that will take you to the majority of your work. I could tab quickly into my courses. Use my information button, address insert, skip the content, say, banner region, banner region, yeah, banner, skip the content, same page. Content. If I hit enter on that, it would jump me to the main region where all my classes already are. But let's say that is not the page you're on yet, so just continue to tab the courses. Banner region, the courses button menu. Okay, courses button, and if I hit spacebar on that. Space expanded. It opens courses, courses, these. my courses, my U.S. government, D2, B1, Bushland, high school. And these all become links. So if I insert F7. Links list dialog, links list view, home, 232. I'm going to hash them up. You cannot do first letter navigation because. My course navigate, the course, my U.S. government, D2, B1, all organization. All of them are labeled with navigate to. So you just have to down arrow to it. So I'm going to hit enter on VA AUS. Enter menu, navigate, the course, my U.S. government, D2, B1, organization, Bushland, high school. Okay, I'm going to hash them up again. Now, the issue here is this side navigation pane, um, and I'm going to show you how you know that it's not even visible to your JAWS. If I do the control F. JAWS find dialog, find what, edit combo, Perfect. updates, okay. essential value, use enter, screen find result dialog, this search screen dot com, oh space. So this page is labeled in such a way that it's like a separate page. So let me show you how students are going to navigate to this side panel. Um, and you're going to hear very quickly how it is labeled. What you want to do is you want to access the item, which is happens to be a graphic. I've already listened to this page. If you insert down arrow, you can actually listen to every everything that's laid out. And that is a graphic. So I hit G for graphic. Exclaim. Profile picture for Rod U.S. government. D2, B1 graphic. And that's what you listen for is profile picture. And then I'm going to tab one time. I've done this many, many different ways. So there's different ways to do it. This one just happens to be uh, the easier option. So I'm going to tab once. Vod U.S. Government, D2B1 Schoology, Google Chrome, link graphic profile picture for a puzzle. And it tells you, link 
gra a graphic profile picture. So if I insert F7. Links list dialog. Links list two. Profile picture for a puzzle at puzzle. Five of 24. That's exactly the move items use the arrow keys. Once again, you cannot do first letter navigation, but you could hit P. You can also hit G for graphic to jump to it. Once again, many ways to do this. This one just happens to be the easiest way. Escape. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is shift tab to my updates. Menu, member, attendance, mastery. Or Grades. you can updates. access any one of those doing it this way. I'm going to hit enter on enter. updates. Leaving menus, list with one item, loading graphic, five U.S. government, D2, D1, school okay. And I'm going to hush them up. And then what you're going to do is hit H for heading to jump directly to your main heading. H, information heading level three. Cloud U.S. government, D2, D1, mm -hmm. visit heading level two link. Now, you could down arrow for this. You could also tab. But if you want to get directly to the main update region, you hit L for list. List of two items. Okay. List of two items. That means you would hit I twice. You could down arrow here. You could tab here. I'm going to hit I. Link profile picture for error pattern. And then I'm going to start down arrowing. Link error pattern. Okay. And then you can immediately access what you need to do. So that's probably one of the more uh, inaccessible. It's not actually inaccessible. You just have to figure out a way around it. That's the way we figured a way around that uh, in order for the student to access it. So those are some more tricks for Schoology. Look for the other videos on Schoology um, and how you can move around it. So I'm going to check real quick our chat. Um, it says, is Schoology only accessible for a child who uses a refreshable Braille display using the Braille Note Touch? My student is uses in a Focus 14. You can use a Focus 14 to access Schoology, um, and you would connect it the same way that you would connect to other platforms. So you can connect the Braille display to their laptop, or you can connect um, the Focus 14 uh, to the website. Um, so yes, you can absolutely use other Braille Notes. Um, it says, is JAWS preferred to voice over I am a Mac, I am in a Mac district. So this really comes to preference. My, what I, my controversial maybe opinion as a TVI is that all students should be learning JAWS, um, regardless if they know how to use voiceover, just because in the working world um, and in higher education, it's definitely preferable. You can absolutely navigate with voiceover um, on a Mac in Schoolology. Um, I don't normally say this, but I feel like it's easier on a Mac um, to c navigate in this particular app. So you can absolutely use a Mac for your student to navigate using the same keys um, and commands that they use within VoiceOver to do that. Um, can you use Schoolology on the iPad? Yes, you can use Schoolology on the iPad. Um, depending on how your students are using it, then it becomes uh kind of how they're doing assignments so if you're having them do a word document or something specific um, it's kind of how the how the ipad interacts with those assignments as opposed to schoolology as a platform if if that makes sense um, and can you use it with a voice over on an ipad yes you absolutely can use it with a voice over on an ipad um, again making sure that the the documents that are uploaded into um, Schoology are accessible. You can also pair your iPad with a Braille note. So somebody mentioned the Focus 14 or a Braille display. So you can pair that to the iPad so they can be reading on their Braille, on their uh, refreshable Braille display, whatever it is, um, in order to make that happen. Um, okay, so we, if we, we have a couple more minutes and I just wanted to come back to this document. How is it not letting me do Gmail? Okay, so I, I'm gonna email all of this to you. Um, okay, so we have the video I just went over, I think is the most helpful, um, but also there's a couple more videos on Schoology you all can look at. Schoology is very secure because they would not give me a login no matter how much I tried. And another document I wanna share with you all is, um, actually created in Maryland, and of course now I can't find it, but I'll, I have it in my PowerPoint. Um, 
So we also have another document, uh, TVI uh, resources for TVIs and O&M virtual instruction and assessment. So this is a document that's um, Maryland has been working on with our steering committee, PG County doing a lot of it. Um, so I wanted to share that with you all. And I'm going to hand it over really quickly to Vicki Codis, who is going to um, who is going to talk to us about a braille the braille displays. And all of this information is going to be sent to you. I know it's a lot of information. Um, so especially the document that I just shared with you in there as well. All of this is going to be shared with you via email. Um, so Vicki, go ahead. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me check real quick because <laughs> I haven't been really good at the Q&A and all that stuff. Let me just make sure. <laughs> this person says the Schoolology help desk is also extremely helpful. So you can call them at any time. And then it says, is there any other screen reading program to use on an iPad beside VoiceOver? Um, I wouldn't recommend anything else because VoiceOver mm -hmm. is inherent to the iPad. And so it works really well. If you try to use something else, it's going to be glitchy and give you a lot of issues. So I would not recommend that. Okay, go ahead, Vicki. All right. Just a couple of quick additions um, on the uh, aspect of time. So yes, uh, I would say like Conchita and my controversial opinion too, uh, voice the, the thing with voiceover and using uh, voiceover in a Mac, it is accessible. It's just not very efficient. And that's one of the things that we get when we use JAWS, for example, the ability to use the different commands and to navigate more quickly to the stuff that we specifically need. That's, I think, one of the biggest difference from a user point of view. So, um, so yeah, like her, I would recommend it, using it with JAWS. It's, I'm not saying you can't use it with VoiceOver because you, you can, but it's more efficient accessing it with JAWS. Um, also, I wanted to share that regarding Braille displays. Um, you can use it with, uh, with, with any Braille display connected to your computer. What's going to happen, for example, if you're using JAWS, is that when you navigate the website, the Braille does, you're going to be using the same commands that you would use with your QWERTY keyboard, right? So, for example, when it comes to headings, you, you're going to be navigating with, with an H for heading, and you would see in the Braille display or the, the, the URV for visitor or visited links, your... Um, your F for getting directly to form fields or B for buttons. And it's very good to be, those are very easy commands aside from the ones that we saw in the videos. Um, and also on the issue of Braille displays, I wanted to say that, so yeah, so that's what's gonna happen when you have a Braille display connected to a computer using JAWS, for example. Uh, with a, if you connect it to an iPad or, or a smartphone um, using VoiceOver, it's going to have its, uh, it, it's going to take its own commands too that are always available in the tutorial of whichever um, uh, screen reader your platform is using. Okay. And when it comes to the, the, and the difference is that when you're using a Braille Note Touch, what you're going to do is uh, when, when you go to a website, you don't really use commands, but you use first, first letter navigation, first letter navigations. For example, um, if you have an assignment, I mean, if your heading is called assignments, you press the A for assignments or for logging, you would press the L for logging. I mean, it, it's the first letter of the item and not a command specifically. And that is why when a student accesses a new platform for the first time, it's always good to explore the whole plat. If, if you are, I'm talking about accessing with a Braille display, I mean, with a Braille note or Braille note touch, because it's distinct for both, 
what's always very useful is that when you're accessing a platform for the first time or for the few first for the uh, for the few initial times the student actually gets acquainted with what with all the elements of the whole page so just read the whole page linearly a couple of times just to know all the elements that are there so that then you can navigate like okay i'm just gonna go to my announcements with my letter a or to my login with my letter l and and so on or to my there's whatever a, discussion there's a question um mm -hmm. that either vicky or chrissy can answer it says how does schoolology work with zoom text let's see i don't know about the updated version chrissy do you have any input on that no i do not i'm sorry um i think though i do not know i'm sorry uh from what i can ask and see what the experience of uh, i can check the accessibility for zoom text and get back to you no problem perfect and all of thank you so much vicky all of this information mm -hmm. will be emailed to you all even though i'm putting it in the chat box and as well as anything else that comes up mm -hmm. can you share real quick vicky mm -hmm. about how to check your students work so that the mirroring thing we were talking about Okay, so let's see. I'm just going through the questions. Okay. Um, okay, sorry, how to check the student work and in, in what? Remember, you were talking to me yesterday about hmm. uh, how, how you can kind of control your students' work, control what they're seeing. Oh, but that, um, oh, let me see. Uh, like what they see on, oh no, that was about, oh no, sorry about that. That was just about um, how I would, oh, let me see. Sorry about that. No problem. This says, so not covering low vision students, just using screen readers and refreshable braille displays. So um, your low vision students, whatever tool they're using, um, it will work with Schoolology in the sense of mm -hmm. most low vision tools will magnify an area um, and interact with it on a superficial level as opposed to interacting with it on uh, like in a way JAWS would or a Braille display. So, mm -hmm. um, so you can absolutely use like magnification. Um, on the iPad, you can zoom in mm -hmm. um, on the specific assignments and on the specific areas that the student is in. And then you could set the accessibility features on the platform. So if they're using, right. for example, an iPad, you can change the way it visually displays on an iPad, um, like if you want to change the colors or whatever, all of the settings that you set will automatically go over to, to Schoolology. So for example, some, some programs are set where they don't let you change um, any of those things where Schoolology mm -hmm. does. So if you have inverted colors or you have something, Schoolology will let you make that change that you have set to the device. So if you've set it to your iPad or to the computer, it will let you do that. So I hope that answers your question a little bit. And one thing I wanted to, to add that I was checking through my notes um, from, from Chrissy's presentation and I wanted to also uh, point out is that it's not just about that it would be accessible if our documents are accessible or what we upload is accessible, but it also has to do with the third party integrated uh, integrated platforms. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, Nearpod comes to mind because many teachers, especially of younger students, are using Nearpod a lot. And what happens is that all the slides that are uploaded on Nearpod are usually not accessible with a screen reader. Um, the buttons are usually not accessible. So that's a tricky platform to integrate into our, into our Schoology um, 
assignments or modules. Um, now, for, and for example, uh, play pause. What, oh no, it's not play pause. What's it called? Play pause it? Play pause it, right? <laughs> um, play pause it is a great platform for uh, another thing you can integrate for interactive videos. And it's super accessible for interactive videos. For example, you're watching a video and you want to insert a question somewhere and, and a screen reader and a braille display can totally access that. It doesn't, um, it's very well labeled. You can access, access live captions. It's a very well, a, a very good pl accessible platform to, to integrate if you want to present interactive, interactive content. I'm going to interrupt you real quick, Vicky. So we're a tiny bit over time. I'm going to <laughs> launch this poll real quick. All right. Um, asking you about your experience on a scale of one to five. How helpful did you find this? Um, realizing that we could have made this like a two hour session. Um, <laughs> there's just so much to talk about for real. And while we wait on the poll, if there's any um, specific questions, if you all want to type them either into the chat or the Q&A, we can answer about two more and then we will mm -hmm. uh, go ahead and wrap up. Thank you so much for answering the poll. Mm -hmm. And while they answer, a quick, quick accessibility um, tip. Mm -hmm. When you're going to upload content, to a text box, like, you know, when you have the, the text box with the, the, the rich editor with the formatting things, if you're going to up, upload content there, it's a good idea to create the content, for example, in Word and tag it up, um, accordingly, tag them with, with all the headings, all the lists, all the tables and whatever, and then copy that into your, um, into your, text into your rich text editor because sometimes uh, that can mess up format a little bit. So that will translate, the formatting will translate. Um, just make sure you hit paste with format. And when you publish it, it should have already all your headings and lists and whatnot. And your document will be accessible. So there's another question, Christy, that made that I'm not sure, or you, Vicky, would know the answer to this. It says a lot of our general ed teachers are using Bit, Bemoji classrooms. Any suggestions for our VI students? Okay, so the Emoji classrooms, mm. like that, um, that is basically, uh, it's still Schoology. It's just that they are um, doing like a Google Live form thing and making mm -hmm. it pretty. <laughs> So they're just yeah. like pretty, but it's still a Schoology, it's still in Schoology. So, um, and they have boxes, uh, buttons and that kind of stuff that they can click on and, you know, and do. Um, so I would just, as far as TVIs, um, do what you normally do when you meet with your classroom teachers and just explain to them that, you know, your kiddo is, you know, the specific vision issues that you have in your child has and that, mm -hmm. you know, um, if it needs to be high contrast colors, you know, yes, you might like a lot of uh, colors and brightness and, but it might be too busy. And so yes. more, so you need to take that in consideration, you know, with your, uh, with your entire general class. So that way it's accessible for all. So this I is totally kind of agree. a two part question. It says, is there a way to make conference accessible for screen reader? Um, I'm not sure what that part means. And then it says, does Schoology know that the left side options are less accessible? Um, they've gotten a bunch of emails and, and, and calls about it. So they are aware and working on it. Um, so yes, they know. Thank you. Thank you for that question. And, and um, the more emails and stuff they get about it, the, they fix it. So y'all should reach out to them too. Somebody asks, um, is there a resource on how to make Play Posit accessible? Okay, so PlayPosit is, uh, is already a very accessible pl uh, platform. Are you talking about a resource to integrate it to your, um, to your content? There should be, uh, I don't have one off the top of my head, but I, mean, I can look for it and get back to Conchita so she can post it with the recording. 
And if you want specific information on um, play positive, it looks like Vicki has done her research on this. So I'll also include, if it's fine with Chrissy and Vicki, <laughs> emails in the, in the follow-up email. So if people want a specific question, they can reach out to you. Yeah, absolutely. And let me just touch base uh, with the Schoology uh, conferences. Um, as far as accessibility to um, the conferences, once you click in it and you start a conference, it's more mainly audio anyway. Mm -hmm. It'd be basically another platform to use to do a video conference. And what we ran into as far as um, having more than one person on a conference is um, Schoology conferencing is only good if you're going to do like TVI and one student. If you have two TVIs trying to communicate with one child or one mm -hmm. TVI trying to communicate with two or more children, then I would highly suggest Microsoft Teams because then that way you can see multiple screens and you can see uh, multiple students at the same time. I had an issue with a child who was on the deaf blind census and we had mm -hmm. to do extended school year this summer and we did it Schoology. So I met with the child and there was the DHH teacher and me and the child. And the only person they could see, unfortunately, was me. <laughs> so <laughs> that, that was an issue. And Schoology is aware of that. But at this point in time, I have not found a resolution to that yet. And I have to mention here, since you mentioned team, that I am finding that Teams is really, I, I made this comment to Conchita yesterday, that Teams is turning to be, is turning out to be more accessible using a Braille display than it is using a, a computer. <laughs> that well, is here on my end because I'm like, this is not accessible at all. <laughs> Teams is an accessible, yeah, Teams is a nightmare from, uh, <laughs> I mean, compared to other platforms, the way it's it's organized. But I'm having, a, uh, but accessing it, accessing the tabs and the contents of the tabs with a braille display is really a breeze. Okay. Thank you so much to both Chrissy and Vicky, um, and thank you all for joining us and staying on a little bit afterwards. You are all going to get a follow up email. Um, with all the resources we mentioned, and then um, by next week, crossing fingers, once I get the captions done, you are also going to receive a um, copy of this recording, and it will also be on the YouTube page of the Maryland School for the Blind. Subscribe. We have a lot of really cool webinars. Mm -hmm. um, if there is a particular platform that y'all are like, what the heck, um, reach out, and I, I, I will literally host it, so just let us know. Thank you again to Chrissy and Vicki and hope you all um, learned a lot on this webinar.